one of this final session for this conference. For those who have not seen me yet on one of the other talks, I'm Miro from the company Typefox. Uh, now it's, uh, this session is about the Eclipse layout kernel. Uh, this is a follow-up on the first presentation of this uh, new project at last year's Eclipse Con. Uh, so it's still in incubation and we are still in the process of um, making it ready to, to, um, to, to get to a stable API to be ready to use in, in applications. So and today I want to motivate um, a bit of uh, what it is, how it, how it can be used for, uh, how it's, uh, its internal structure and, and approaches is wor working. Um, this project itself is, uh, has been taken or has been started as uh, the result of a, an open source academic project at the University of Kiel, where I have, I have been working there uh, uh, myself for a few years. So the, the first uh, lines of code on, um, on the predecessor of this project that, that was called Keeler um, have been written around 2008 or seven or eight. So it's already quite a, a few years that have been of work that have been put into this um, into this project. So as the name says, it's about layout. This means uh, it's not about uh, yet another um, framework for graphical editing or viewing. So the editing viewing stuff of uh, ed um, uh, diagrams and, and graphical things is uh, we, we leave that to other um, uh, other tools. Uh, there was a good presentation by Alexander on, on uh, GEF and, and what what you can expect from that one. So here we just want layout. So first thing, why would uh, we, do we maybe want layout? Uh, we'll start with just showing it. <coughs> um, and the first thing is a in the first place maybe a bit ugly to see diagram. This is um, just a, a, some kind of random layout for a um, a class diagram created with the standard eCore diagram um, <coughs> um, editor. And here I just plugged in the Eclipse layout kernel um, integration for GMF, which is the basis for this eCore diagram editor. So, and just using this plugin without any further configuration, I can just say, give me a layout for this, and it will give me a layout. So, and if you wanted uh, to, to tweak it, there's, uh, there are in interfaces for that. You can choose a different al algorithm if you don't like th this uh, one here. So let's try this one, layout again, and I get another view of the same thing. So uh, I think anybody who has already um, done actual work with a graphical editor knows how much uh, work and how much time consuming it is to do all this drag dragging around of stuff uh, by hand. If you want, and uh, yeah, if you want something decent, you really have to put so, uh, quite some effort into that. Uh, one area where it, uh, it's not only a time saver but really indispensable is when you, whenever you want to do model transformations and 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 get a view of the resulting model. If you want to do that uh, view creation by hand, it's uh, yeah. You, you have to do that, that each time you create the model again. That's just impossible to do this. So um, uh, yeah, tr by transforming models, you need some kind of automatic layout in order to be really uh, get, uh, see what is the result. Yeah, you don't w really don't want to do that by hand. And then as a third motivation is um, another approach that, uh, that was also born in, in out from that same academic group there it was called synthetic graphical views. So here the concept is to, uh, to in, uh, create diagram views on models uh, entirely automatically without any interaction mechanism that, that allows you to manually move around things. And I want to show that too. So this is actually an example uh, that is developed at the University of Kiel. It shows uh, data flow diagrams. Uh, they the models themselves have been taken from another project uh, from the University of Berkeley with the name Ptolemy. So, and these diagrams are highly hierarchical. So here you, there are um, hierarchical uh, boxes or mo uh, modules that can be expanded. So in this viewer allows the in-place expansion of things. And the all layouts are done automatic, fully automatically on the fly uh, as I um, navigate through this diagram in order to, to see the interconnections. 
So in, in, as you can see, the algorithms are also fast enough to interoperate with, so, so I can just use them, browse, look through this diagram and uh, try to find myself in, into it and try to understand things. So here, the, as I said, the concept is I, there's no way to, to move around the boxes. I can only adjust my view on it and only adjust parameters of, uh, of the layered algorithms. So I can adjust the spacing or choose different uh, uh, algorithms for placement, placing the elements. And so on. So these are kinds of applications that you can build if you start relying on high quality layered algorithms. And of course, the high quality part in it is, is important. Yeah, um, if you would try to, to offer something in this concept um, in, in your application with a low quality layout, that uh, wouldn't really work. So that's why the, um, no, wrong button. I always wonder why they put this into this thing here. <laughs> So um, that's why one of the main focuses of this project is, is really on the high quality part of the layered algorithms. And that's also where most of the work is actually put into. The other thing is to, to put some infrastructure around them. And so that gives us a large number of options for fine tuning the layout. So uh, now here I only showed very few things of that, but if you, if you so usually, uh, what also our experience at the university was when we, um, when we uh, ad adapted this into applications, uh, in, into products uh, that were built in, uh, for industry applications, uh, we noticed that we need a lot of fine-tuning uh, parameters. Uh, that's uh, b because each application has very special constraints to how the layout, uh, uh, sp certain um, properties of the layout, layout should look like. So that, and that's very important and that's uh, provided um, here in this project. And we have an infrastructure for integrating this into the application. So this is the basic um, overview. There, on one side you have your diagram viewer or editor, on the other side the layout algorithm, and in the middle there's a data structure called the ALK graph. And so the ALK graph is the, the input for the layout algorithm. They operate on this graph or at least trans transform it internally into something they can work on. And between the viewer and the graph, there's a so-called layout connector. And I will explain later how this looks like. But this, this is the, int the one who mediates between uh, your viewer and, uh, and the graph's data structure. So now let's get to the, to the core, the graph itself. I've put a new marker here because um, the, uh, this ELK graph is a, is a, new, uh, is a new newly designed version of what was previously the K graph, um, the previous version of that graph data structure. So we took the chance now that we are starting a new project also to improve on, on this very central and basic data structure. So here, this is about ba the basic elements of the diagram, which are nodes and edges. So these are the most important. Then we can also have labels on edges, labels in nodes and other, uh, all other elements. We have ports. Uh, these are very important, for example, uh, in applications like this data flow example that I showed in, in the beginning. So this means the edges have uh, are constrained uh, to be attached to these points of, of the nodes. And there, are, there is hierarchy. This is, was also contained in the example I showed. So um, a hierarchical node is allowed to contain uh, a sub-diagram. So and one thing that is um, important for the, um, uh, for the uh, uh, parameters uh, that I uh, mentioned is uh, you can attach properties to any of these graph elements, so, uh, to nodes and to edges and everything else. And these properties are mainly meant to control the layered algorithm. So, so these are the parameters that, that, that uh, give it, say exactly, for this subgraph, I want this layered algorithm with this uh, spacing between the elements and the main direction should be to left to right. I want the edges routed as splines and so on. So you can put these things into any of the graph elements. And of course, then it's up to the layered algorithm how to, uh, to interpret them. And then there's also contained in the same data structure, there's um, layout information, uh, the concrete layout information. So that, that contains coordinates. 
so x and y coordinates of, of the nodes and bend point coordinates for edges uh, or for splines we would have then coordinates of control points that say uh, that uh, describe w the curvature of the spline and so on so th that means the data structure is not only the input of the layered algorithms but also their output yeah because the output information is included in, in that structure and it's written directly back to the structure so it's not a new instance yeah, on this side of the layered algorithms, we have um, a few purely Java implementations. Um, so the most important is, is called ELK layered. Um, most important uh, because that's the one that has uh, got the, by far the most uh, work in it. So, and it has a large number of variants. So this is a straight line connection variant. Then there's also an orthogonal variant. That's the one we saw in the demo in the beginning and you can use uh, compute splines with it. It supports hierarchical layout as we saw in ports. And so it has, um, so I would say this is really the, uh, to this point, uh, the high quality part of the whole project. Then there are also s some simpler things that are currently more than like placeholders uh, where the high quality part is a little bit missing, but um, yeah, we, that's something we can work on also um, later on. Um, so one is the tree algorithm that is mainly meant for trees, but yeah, as, as you see here, it supports also simple cases where the tree property is uh, violated. And force-based algorithms, th these are quite funny because they, uh, th they apply kind of as physical analogies, uh, um, like attracting and repelling forces between the, the nodes, um, depending on, on their connections. Um, so yeah, they, they get attracted by their neighbors, so to say, and, and repelled by, by other nodes. So they, these layouts are kind of a balance um, situation in this physical model. Then we also have a connection uh, to GraphVis. Uh, those who have been at the talk about uh, GEF um, have seen, have already heard about this um, external layout a library which is written in C, so that's a little bit more complicated to include then, so we, we have to start a new process and communicate with that one. But it, wor it works, you can include graphics uh, layouts in, in, your, in your application if you want. And there's another library called OGDF, this one is written C++, so we still have the same kind of communication, inter-process communication, and um, the, the layouts offered by this library are quite interesting. So they have very high sophisticated layouts um, and like this orthogonal stuff here, um, uh, probably they are, some of these layered algorithms are quite unique actually. Uh, but it's all, this is all in GPL. So this could be a reason for many of you maybe not to use this one, but um, yeah, it could still be interesting. The layout options, that's something I showed. Um, this is a property sheet uh, style view where you have um, single, uh, where, where, where the app options are listed that are available for the currently selected algorithm. This is, of course, not, uh, not mandatory to use it in your application, so it's an optional component, and you can design your own interfaces to, to control the layered algorithms. Um, like, for example, in, my, in the second example, I showed um, the sidebar that has just, and just a simple uh, 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 radio button selection. So, so that is, for example, an alternative to this uh, style here. And uh, another th new thing here is uh, in, that is, has been developed this year is a, a language, uh, so a DSL based on Xtext for describing metadata on layered algorithms. And this is uh, necessary to get the, the uh, options and parameters that are supported by the layered algorithms, uh, UI elements such as this list here. So we read out that data and, um, and we, it's also possible to do other things out from this description like uh, gen generate documentation of the layered algorithms and so on. So, um, and these, this DSL d it contains information on the options like this node spacing option. So the label and description are the, uh, uh, those parts that go into the user interface. Then it also declares default values, lower bounds, um, which is also important uh, to consider in the user interface and so on. And then here's a declaration of a layout algorithm. This is a reference to the class that implements the algorithm. And then it, it says, uh, like here, it supports 
um, this option. That means if we activate this algorithm, this option can be offered to the user to customize it. So th usually as a user of, of the layout of ELK, you won't have to do a lot with this interface. It's mainly actually uh, for the maintainers of ELK. But uh, could, uh, just wanted to show that so w to, to show you what is new in this year. Now to the application side, how to, to invoke the layout and, and configure it. And I will show you two ways. One is the low level way that would be to create an instance of the ELK graph, so this me mediating data structure in the middle, and pass it to a layered algorithm. So this passing is just uh, uh, looks like this. You have an instance of a layered algorithm, just say layout with a graph and a progress monitor that allows you to, to cancel or to, ch to check how far are we. And after that, you have in the graph, as I explained before, contains coordinates, and you have to write these coordinates into your diagram yourself. So this can be done, of course, and this, this, uh, in this case, we only need the algorithm side of, of uh, ELK, and that part is con entirely independent of, of any Eclipse uh, OSGI or, or UI components, so that ca this could even work in, um, in headless uh, um, applications. You could do that on a, on a server, for example, or it could work in, in other, um, on other UI um, applications other than Eclipse, for example. Uh, there's also a high-level way to use inside Eclipse, and this, the interface here is the class Diagram Layout Engine, so that has, a, uh, for example, a method called Invoke Layout, where you just pass a workbench part, so an edit editor of view, and optionally a selection in inside that part, and a parameters object, which can also be empty, that then it takes just the defaults or, or pre-configured stuff. And that's it. And in this case, of course, now it's the question, how does the transformation from the diagram to the graph and, and back to, uh, take part? Well, this is done uh, using a, a so-called layout connector implementation that does exactly that. So it has a build layout graph that does the creating the ELK graph instance and an apply layout uh, method that does the transfer coordinates back to the diagram. So quite easy to understand and, and this the cool thing is here is we, as the ELK project, will provide standard implementations of these layer connect connectors for the mostly used uh, 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 Eclipse-based diagramming um, uh, frameworks. We ha currently, we have GMF and, and Graffiti, and will uh, so, um, quite soon also work on the, the new GF4-based uh, diagrams and, and uh, views. So a um, little bit of information how to include that then if you have written your own or, or a customized variant of, of such a layout connector. We have switched to using Google Juice um, now to, to, um, to add customizations of, uh, of this integration of the whole stuff. So uh, you have to create a Juice module that includes your custom layout connector and then yeah, just write a setup class that, that, that includes this, this Juice module. And this, currently this one is registered with an extension point. So um, the ELK infrastructure can, uh, knows where to look up imp available implementations when, when this invoke layout method is, uh, is called. I will show an example of such an integration. Um, for two editors that uh, are not um, any standard editors, just very, very simple um, graphical editors. One is created with the GMF tooling and the other uh, with Graffiti. And here again, um, I, I'm just using the layout connections just as plugins without any customization. And uh, still they work. So uh, here uh, the two editors look slightly differently. The, the edges in the Graffiti version um, are rounded and are not rounded in the GMF version. But so you can see it in, in many cases, it works out of the box and, st and still you have the chance to, uh, to add custom parameters, to add a fine tuning if you want to include this in, in, a, in an application, which of course is, is necessary then in, in order to get exactly the result that you expect. Good. Um, that's it more or less. Um, yeah. The ELK 
So the ELK is basically about layout algorithms. Um, I didn't talk today about the algorithms itself, mainly because that, it, uh, that topic is uh, good enough for filling uh, more than, than one to whole talk, maybe a whole, a whole conference. Uh, it's really interesting and uh, uh, yeah, really ex exciting stuff going on in there. And um, so what I showed you today more is this infrastructural part. So how you, can you connect these algorithms with your diagrams? So um, there is currently a release 0 0.1, which, uh, but this release was, um, was more for uh, um, internal purposes for in uh, the interconnection with the already existing applications that use the ELK at the university group that um, is involved in that. Um, there will be a second release in this December, and uh, this will be the release where we'll, that will include the new graph data structure, ELK graph, that I um, uh, explained today. So um, I wouldn't really recommend to start uh, writing your application based on the current 0 0.1 version, but I think starting with 0 0.2, uh, we will really tr uh, see uh, try to, to get to a finalized uh, version of the API so, so that you will we'll really try to get to, to a stable API from uh, shortly after that. So I think this is one of the main goals. So, in, so you, you will be able to experiment with it and to start um, building stuff on it and, and evaluating it. So what's left to say, just try it out. As the ALK is saying, stop moving around boxes, start clicking the magic button. And let's see. Yeah, we have quite some, so a few minutes maybe for questions. Is there anything? So this, this is an existing plugin on Eclipse now. How, how do you get close to that? To use it. Well, there's currently a, um, it has a, a web page. Um, I think it's, well, I think it's just K. Am I connected? <coughs> yes. And here it should have a download section with an update site. Yes, so the release 0 0.1 update site is here. That also contains the, um, the connectors for GMF and Graffiti that I mentioned. So you can use that version uh, to, to try out if the standard connection works for the editors that you, you want to connect it with. So um, yeah, the examples that I showed today that are based on GMF and Graffiti use this standard connection without any further adaptation. So you could, uh, of course, just try it out, install it, and, and see what it does. And um, the update site ha um, has quite a lot of available features, um, so you can decide which to take depending on which dependencies you want. So um, the, uh, the default Java implementations of the layered algorithms are always included, but uh, for example, there's a, sp a separate p feature for a graph vis and another well, the OGDF feature is actually not on that update side because uh, that contains EP, uh, GPL code. Um, but yeah, you can try it out there. More, more questions? Yeah. You mentioned the uh, connector for GF4. Do you have an estimated time for arrival for that? Um, so I hope I will. F um, we will be able to, to start working on that in the following months now. Um, I would say latest, uh, after the first quarter of next year, we will we'll have um, a, a plugin available that, that, uh, for download or a, or a feature that contains the necessary plugins. I hope maybe even a bit earlier, let's see. As far as I've understood now, it shouldn't be too much work to do, do that. Okay, it seems like uh, th that's it. Then, good coming back home for, uh, to everybody. And thank you for listening. <laughs>